Hi everyone and welcome to my studio. My name is Elizabeth Knob and I teach private viola, violin, and piano lessons here in my studio in Midlothian, Virginia. I teach both in-person and online students right here at my desk. So today I want to give you an overview of how I teach, what my studio is like, and what you can expect if you take lessons from me. So I am primarily a violist. I have two degrees in viola performance. You can see one there, maybe the top of the other one. But I've been playing violin for about 19 years and piano for I think about 22 years. A long time now. <laughs> Um, I love teaching all three instruments, both right here in person and online over Zoom. I think that it's so fulfilling and always fun to just teach music throughout the day, every single day. My lessons are weekly. If you'd like to do more than once a week, that's totally okay. But I try to keep everyone on a weekly schedule because it's very important to make consistent progress and to keep a routine going. It's also important to practice along with that routine too. And having weekly lessons and having a weekly goal is so helpful to just keep you in that routine. I offer 30 minute lessons, 45 minute lessons, and 60 minute lessons for each and every instrument. I usually recommend if you're just starting out or if you have a young student, then 30 minutes is usually just enough time for them. Intermediate to advanced players can definitely benefit from 45 minutes and 60 minutes is great for people who are advanced, older, maybe high school and older. And if you have a lot of goals in mind, like if you're getting ready for an audition or if you're in a high level orchestra and you want to just keep getting better and making really good progress. I tailor my teaching to each individual student, but I tend to reach for a couple different method books, and I'll show you those now. For violin and viola, I love the ABCs of violin or viola for the absolute beginner. I also supplement with the Suzuki books to help students learn more classical repertoire, but I think that using another method book in addition to that really helps them gain a very good understanding and background knowledge of the instrument. And then on piano, I almost always just use Piano Adventures. I love this series and it's very, very comprehensive for any age musician. If you're coming from other lessons or if you're coming from learning in school, I will of course work with whatever you've got and we'll kind of make our own way from there based on what I think would help you and what I think suits your needs the most. So I offer recitals usually about twice a year, one in the spring and an annual Halloween recital where we all dress up and play some of our favorite music. It's always so, so much fun and students are always so excited and really looking forward to the next one each and every year. We just recently had a pre-recorded summer recital um, about two weeks ago. So in lessons, we recorded ourselves playing and then I put it together for kind of a compilation video of everyone performing and we had a watch party over Zoom. It was a great way to bring together all of my online students with all of my in-person students so that they could meet each other and they could see how everyone else plays. I also offer monthly studio classes. I've got them all planned out for the fall. So in August, in just a couple weeks, we will be having a practice reboot where we talk about how we're currently practicing and how we can make those habits better to see progress quicker and to use our time more efficiently. In September, we'll be learning composition with a guest composer. In October, we'll learn about spooky classical music and also practice performing for our annual Halloween recital. And then in November, I'll be teaching all about the different musical eras throughout history and the important composers from each and kind of um, the types and styles of music that were composed in each of those eras. These are always a lot of fun. They're always on Zoom so that my students from all over the world can join in. And they're always Fridays around the middle of the month in the evening. It's so great for students to get to know each other. They can meet each other, see what they're like, and it doesn't feel so much like, yeah, I take violin lessons, but I'm part of a studio in general and part of the community and you know each other and get to know each other. We usually play some games at the studio classes and students always have fun with that. It's always a great time. Now I think it's time to take a tour of the music studio so you can see where you'll be working if you're coming in in person or just what's around me if you usually just see me on a screen. When you walk in, I have some prizes for our summer <laughs> practice challenge, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, and business cards for places that I really like, myself, and some local youth orchestra programs. Then we have my plants. If a parent comes in, they can sit here, or I also have seating that I will show you in a little bit. And this is where students can unpack. I have a couple books here that I like to reference every so often, and we have some art that students have made me and programs from past recitals. Here we have my instruments. I'm always, always playing and demonstrating different little passages for students, and of course, having my instruments on hand is very important. Here's the music stand where in-person students play. 
have a lot of nice motivational positive stickers on this stand and it's always fun to get more and add more to that stand. We have some essential tools. We have some rosin, some pencils, paper clip, and a tuner. All very essential things when we're playing music. And here's my desk, my computer setup, and my webcam for teaching online students. My iPad is essential because I have at least half of my sheet music on there for students. Then we have my piano. I do have one in-person piano student right now, so it's a little tight back here, but it works. And online students can directly see my keyboard, but I also have a little stand for my phone to show close-ups of the keys when I play. And then here's the backdrop for online lessons. We have a program from when I saw Hilary Hahn in concert and met her afterwards. It was amazing and fabulous. I loved it. Then we have some beautiful art from Incremezzo on Etsy. And this used to be my violin until it got this giant crack in it. I neglected it a bit when I was really just studying viola. Now I have a new one, but I painted the tailpiece on this one to kind of make it into some art and still give it some love. So I love having this behind me. I'm very happy with how it came out. It was a really fun project to do. Then we have my degrees on the wall. I went to Shenandoah Conservatory for my Bachelor of Music in Viola Performance, and then my master's degree from the Hart School of Music, where I got my master's degree for Viola Performance. Then we have a mirror that students can look in if they've got a beautiful bow hold going, or if they're holding the violin really, really beautifully, they can see it right there. It's important to have a mirror somewhere where you practice at home too, for the same reasons. It's really, really helpful. And lastly, I was featured in an article in Strings Magazine back in, I think, April of this year. So I have a copy of that hung right here because I'm really, really proud of it. Lastly, I just want to show what it looks like when we have online lessons. Here's what my backdrop looks like now. <laughs> you can see my piano over here and when I play. You can generally see everything that you need, but if you need to see a close up, there it is. And I have very nice microphones set up so that you can hear every detail of my playing. If we're talking about specifics in music, I will share my iPad screen on the screen and write all over it. So um, if you don't have measure numbers, this is really helpful so that I can circle a measure that I'm talking about so that we can find it a little bit easier. Or if we're adding in finger numbers, then it's a lot easier than just saying them out loud. It's easier to copy them just when you see it visually. This is a feature that I use all the time in online lessons and it's so helpful. I basically just use my iPad as a whiteboard. And then if you're taking piano lessons and you need to see a close up, I'll hold my phone up and you can see a close up of my hands. It's very helpful if um, fingerings just get a little bit confusing during lessons. All right, the very last thing I want to share with you today in this video is all about our summer practice challenge. It is ending this upcoming week if you're watching this right when I posted it, but we have been tracking our progress and um, the number of times that we've practiced. And here's our leaderboard. We had two people tie to get to the finish line on the same day, which was very, very fun. And they got a very special prize, a Nintendo eShop gift card. Um, but students could log their practice when they just did regular practice, but we also learned about very good practice techniques, practicing rhythm and sight reading, um, performance practice technique, and note reading. So doing those things could give them an extra boost to get further along in addition to just practicing, and it's really, really shown a lot of progress in my students. It's been really great. So I'm planning some things that we can do for the fall and the winter this year as school starts and we'll end up adding those to the studio very soon. I think that should give you a good overview of my lessons and how the private studio works. Right now I have students in 10 different states and two countries, the US and the Cayman Islands, which is very, very exciting. I love connecting with students from all over the world and getting to know them and making music with them. It's always so, so fun. If you're interested in lessons, please just send me an email. Um, I will put it right on the screen here. If you're on my website, there are also contact forms that you can just click and set up um, different preferences that you have, and I will get back to you very, very soon with that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you will consider taking lessons with me, and I will see you again soon.
Thanks for watching.